We are live on location yes. at the 45th annual Jane and Finch Classic. Yes. I am your host, Anthony Iguodaro. I'm your co-host, Chris Blackwood. What up, what up, what up, what up? Let's go. Listen, Jane and Finch Classic has always been one of my favorite tournaments. Of course. It's crazy because we played in it for so many years. Right. Uh, I remember the days when it was at, you know, your... Yup. You know, Westview. At, at Westview. Yup. Um, you know, Scoop Dome recently. Romero, last Arch, year. Archbishop Romero. Archbishop Romero. Shout out 121 so Humber. It, you already know like, Boulevard. And now we're, we're, you know, look where we're at. Six courts were in Durham. Mud Tink. Like, we got six courts going on. Going crazy. We got, we got Unity, AZ Unity. We got the Gators. We got Northern Kings. Canada Elite. Yes. Canada Elite. Yes. Yes. Everybody, all the top programs Boa, in the country. Everybody's in here, B. Boa Academy. Like everybody's here, man. We started off with he said, you know, maybe 20 teams to 180 teams. 16 now. to 180. 16 to 180. That's crazy. That is crazy. This is a beautiful thing. The community is out celebrating one another. Yup. You know, we 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 gotta give Chippy, you know, his roses. Gotta give him his roses while he's alive. And Real everybody talk. who's involved in this tournament, man. It's a beautiful thing. It's organized amazingly. You know, through the doors, through the security, yeah. games are on time, the refereeing is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It's the perfect platform to compete, talk Absolutely. your shit, and win a chip. Yes. Yeah, you know I mean? If you haven't played in the Jane Finch Classic, man, you ain't saying nothing, You ain't saying man. nothing. You, you ain't, ain't saying, saying nothing. nothing. We are live back on location yep. at the Jane Finch Classic. We got the man himself. Mr. Jane Finch Classic himself. Mr. Jane Finch himself. We got Chippy in the building. Thank you. Respect, we, one we love. We made a movie last time. Yeah, we, were, we did. When you were on. Yo, yo, we going viral. Yeah. We, I'm calling it from now. <laughs> right. We gonna talk we made, our shit. We Let's made go. a movie. We made a movie last time he was on. So, so we always love when you come on. Thank you. I'm Buddhist now, so things <laughs> might change. <laughs> Listen, yo. Jada Finch Classic. I want to talk about the development. How many years are we in now? I'm in my 19th year. You're how much? My 19th year. 19. 19th year. I want to talk about the development on how it started to now. Like, look at this. This is crazy. You, Six you, you courts got east, you bumping. got west. 180 like, teams. I, I, hold, I, I want, like, I want, yo, fam. But hold on, hold on. Yo. I want you to just to tell, <laughs> talk about the development, how it started to now. I want you to really go with some key important factors of that. Go ahead. Well, I've always wanted to do tournaments, and uh, I remember Top Gun, they were doing a tournament in 2003, and I went and volunteered and got some help from Madman. Shout out to Sean Madman. <laughs> shout, shout out to Wilton Butcher. You gotta shout out those guys. Shout out to the whole Top Gun OG. Yeah, but that's where the vision came in, and then Lester Green in 2005 from Parks and Rec decided he didn't want to do it anymore. And then uh, I linked up with a guy named Strings, Yep. Nino Brown and Roger. And, Shout out uh, Strings, Roger. Nino Brown and Kofi. Kofi. And then we took OG. it to a new level, and that's what it was. 2005 until now, I'm still here, baby. Like you never left. Like, looking good, like, too, just, baby. Like Looking good. Real. Can, look at him. Look at him, baby. Can you just see this? Do you, have you sat around since the week started? Because it started Wednesday, the tournament. Tuesday, baby. Tuesday. Tuesday. Sorry, I'm here from Sorry Tuesday, my bad. Fam. Tuesday. <laughs> have you had a time to sit back. I see you, you're just moving. Have you had a time to sit back and be like, wow, like, I, I did this. Like, we're, we're talking about East. We're, we're, we're West End, man. We're in the East we're right in the, now. Deep in the East, fams. Like, you brought out the whole entire city. Well, the sun rises in the East and sets in the West, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you now we do it already. But, uh, yeah, I do reflect. Every morning I get up and I give thanks. You know, not, not because of the success of the tournament, but just thankful that I'm in a position to have people support me and people really care about, you know, what I'm trying to do for the community and the city and the country. So, yeah, yes. I'm very thankful. We got Canada out here, man. Canada, they're all out here. <laughs> Yo, I, I rate I rate the fact that not only do you have a, a boys, like a youth, uh, a young adult division, you also have a girls division. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And That's crazy. Jane Finch Classic always had the women's division. That's but right. But never had the girls. Well, I, I make love. So I have two daughters. 
So they, you know, when you have daughters, because of your love making ability, right? You gotta support the ladies. You got it. And the you young woman. So it's all what it's all about. It's, I'm you, trying to grow the girls' game. Are, are you are you like? How do you feel about the expansion of girls' basketball right now, too? Oh, it's wonderful. I mean, our girls are involved. They're playing. You know, they're looking pretty with it too. Like they're coming on the court with lashes and everything. <laughs> like <they said> so. <laughs> they're giving 30 with the lashes on. They're giving 30 with the lashes on and everything. We've done up. Like, yo, I'm 16. Here you go. <laughs> so, nails everything. Let's so, go. shout out to my lady, girl, ballers. Definitely. Love y'all. Love the fact that you guys are engaged. Keep coming on, playing basketball, right growing on, the man. game. It's a Bye. beautiful thing, growing the game for sure. In regards to top organization, yo, you got a lot of organizations in the building. Wow. wow. You got a lot. Wow. You got some, of the, you got some right of the top organizations in the, the six oh, under real. one roof competing at a very high level. So my question to you is, you, you kind of have a feel of who's number one. You could oh, only my. choose one. Well, who do you think is the top program right now? AZ Unity. AZ Unity. Yep. They're in the building. They're taking some L's right now, but it's still early. Yeah, it's explain, still early. Explain, though. I want to know why. Explain. Because when you have a leadership that's established in Canada and leadership that's established in America, um, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. You can't go wrong with someone who knows how to lead a team and someone who has proven success. So that's how I'm going to go with AC Unity. That's, that's a good top, one. Top. That's a great program, man. So, so you know, a lot of the Canada elite folks are going to think differently. Well, and I like the way, I love the way you had, you had to start the 15U division off correctly. You had Canada Lee for its AZ Unity. Shout out Coach Jordan. That was a big dub you got. Huge dub. I got to shout out Devon Jones. I got to shout out Chris Skinner. I got to shout out Shane James. I got to shout out JR, Jamino, X, all of the Canada Lee man them. Big up yourselves. In Canada, Canada Lee is a top program. In Canada. But the top program here is AZ Unity. So I just want to clarify myself. <laughs> there you go. There you the, go. The next best program is you play, but they're not here. They're not here. Uh, they're not here. I don't know why. Everybody but you playing here. So we got to get you playing so, here. So so I, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I think we're very fortunate to be in a lot of chat groups. And you're doing a fabulous job. You have, them, you have all the organizations, all the conveners, anybody that's anybody. You have them in the building, and you have them in chat groups. I'm going to be a little mixy right now. You called out you play. I'm cool with a lot of men from you play. But I think you stood on it in pause. You stood on it, and you sat on it in regards to you play not having, not being part of the Jenna Finch Classic. Because there's a lot of Canadian players playing for you play that want to play in the tournament, but you're saying they can't play. So my question is, I love what Dwayne Washington has done. He is he provided an outlet for men to play in the made hoops in the States, a platform in the States. You have to give him his flowers for that. You know what? I but you were getting at him. Why? I want to shout out. Dwayne Washington. Yes. I want to give a shout out to Kevin Scarlett. But when you go to war with me, you go to war. When we go to basketball war, we go to war. And I'm glad that Dwayne was able to meet a bigger person and squash the war. So, Bodman pull up played. And when Bodman pull up played, he said, let's do business chips. So, you know what, Dwayne? Yeah, my guy, I'm done. Just make sure you play in Canada, which you said you're going to play in Canada. And we'd love to see you at the Classic next year. You got to be out here. And that's all I got to say. All right. Cool, cool, so, cool, cool. listen, <laughs> I want to go back to the beginning, 
So now, as far as the expansion, you got how many teams in the Classic now? We got 181 teams. That is unheard and of. what did you start with? Look at that. We started it's with. Crazy. It's just crazy. It's how, how many teams did you start with? Well, when I took over, we had 16 teams. So 16 teams to 180 teams. Brother, that's impressive. Like, man, this is crazy Do you over see here. what's it's going crazy. on right now? AZ Unity. We got the Gators and AZ Unity going at it right now. What? It's crazy. God is good, you know, when you're doing something because you're passionate about it. Yes. I'm passionate about this. I love what I do. Mm. And I look forward to these tournaments each year. So for me, it's just all about giving back to the city, giving back to the community, putting something together that's quality, that's organized, and that's competitive. This is amazing. I love it. Hold up. I got another question. You're my OG, a Finch alum, a Finch OG that gave me my first job when I graduated, right when I graduated from Concordia. I had my daughter, and I, I had to kind of put the hoop dreams aside for a quick second because I need to make, to make dollars. And when Recognize the Real was bumping, Chippy was organizing it, and he was like, Blackwood, I'm doing a literacy program. I want you to facilitate it. And you put some dollars in my pocket, so I'll forever be grateful to you, regardless. That's what's up. And on top of that, Lessons. when 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 um Jane Finch Classic was still building up and you had it at Romero, all the Catholic schools in the city, <laughs> he gave me the opportunity to run Romero. That's right. All the right. all the teams gave me the Romero. That. You know what I mean? So I gotta give you your flowers in that regard. Respect. A lot of cats in the streets of Finch wanna know. Will the Jada Finch Classic ever touch a York University, touch a Westview again? I, th I think so. I think. But it got to touch all those schools. I, I you think. You got six gyms bumping, 180 teams. That's going to be hard to accommodate. No, no, no. I think. If anybody can do it, Chippy can. Yeah, Chippy I can think, think the in the next 10 to 15 years, when they build a facility, we'll be able to swing it back down there in the next Sam. 10 to 15 years. Sam. We need a playground in Finch. <laughs> we need a playground in Jada Finch. You heard that, Sam. We've been talking about it for two. Jamie the boss. We got to shout Jamie the boss. We've been talking about that. Let's get that playground chippies going. We need it. We Let's want go. it. Let's go. Before you go, you've been doing this for 19 years, you said, right? 19 years, baby. Why do you continue to keep doing it? The love. I mean, I love watching high-quality basketball. I love being here. I love seeing all your faces. This is like a reunion. That's what basketball does, man. And, and, and life is short. So let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy each other's company. And that's what I do it. I want to give everybody the opportunity to get recognized. Where can they get the merch from, man? $25. Where? Yeah. Where can they get it? Oh. Can they order online oh. or is it only oh. on location? On location right now. Or hit me up on the IG at Jane Finch Clothing Brand. We got your fresh tees, we got your fresh hat. We got what you need. We even got some fresh dinner for you. Some macaroni and cheese all done up, everything. Done up. Ready. Yo, yo, last question. Yo, I always said for the young ballers coming up, you're not a certified hooper. You can't get that certified title, that certified title if one, you don't win a Jaden Finch Classic, and two, you don't get an MVP in a Jaden Finch Classic. Real talk. So can you remind guys that the realest hoopers came through? Oh, Tell, man. Give a, give a rundown of the real NBA hoopers they already that know. came through and blessed the stage. Andrew Wiggins, yes. Jamal Murray, Jamal McGlure. Yes. Uh, Robert Tractor. Can't Trailer, forget about Dan Brown. Jalen Rose, Dan Brown, Andrew Nemhart. Andrew Nemhart. Uh, Eugene has blessed it. What else am I missing, man? Marlo Davis, so many, man. Nathaniel Mitchell. We got Marlo Mitchell. Davis, on, Nathaniel man. Mitchell. Man, yo, Chris Blackwood. Oh, you already know. You already Iggy Stutzen. Jerome, Jerome Robinson, Jerome Mike Robinson, Smith. Robinson, yeah. Wayne Smith. Mike George. Mike George, yes. Bad man is touch shit. <laughs> Wilton Brown. The list goes on, man. The list goes Ralph, on, baby. Steve Morrison. Who do you say, Ralph? Brandon Johnson. Ralph who? <laughs> Sorry. Yo, listen. Chippy, man. Yo, hold up. Chip. <laughs> Chip, I know you're an R&B Savant, shout out to the karaoke that we have. You know I got you know that I mean? voice, baby. But this is the 50 years of hip hop. 
50 years of hip hop were celebrated. Yeah. In the hip hop hoop world, we're already talking about what hip hop artists introduce you to hip hop. Right. So my question to you is, what hip hop artists introduce you to hip hop? Well, I'm a little bit of old school. I'm older than you guys. So there's a group called Leaders of the New School. Oh. Busta Rhymes is a part of Leaders yeah. of the New School. Shout out Busta. Yeah, I, I was in grade. That was my introduction. That was you. That right. was just yeah. that. Ah, scenario. So, they did a scenario, but I did the Charlie Brown part. <laughs> and he goes, hold on. I, I did it in the talent show in Brookfield. Who's that, Brown? <laughs> Some say I say, call uh, me Charlie. The word is the herb and I be like Bob Marley. Uh, baby, baby, the baby. You get, hey, hey, <laughs> hey. Contact, hey. can I get a hit? Uh, hit, hey. boom, bit, but the brother make, whoop. What's on all this song? Cause you born in the 90s. He ain't helping me out. Yo, Chippy, we appreciate you, man. It's love, appreciate brother. Appreciate you guys, man. Thank you. I got work Live to Live on location, man. Jane Finch Hip Hop Classic. Hoops, baby. We, we out here, baby. Himself. We're Chippy. Hip Hop, me too. Let's Jane go. Classic. Dwayne, 182. Dwayne, Washington, and me, we're good friends now. Let's go. We're done. We are back live on location at the Jane and Finch Classic. I am your host, Anthony Iguodaro. And I'm your co-host, Chris Black. What, what up, what up, what up, what up? Let's go. Listen, we got a legend in here. Yo. Coach Chris is with us from Finally. the Gators. Coach we've been, Chris we've been, trying to, we've been talking about getting him on for a while. Ben. Yeah. For a hot minute. We, we are here. Now we he's here. here. First we appreciate all, first you. First of all, you guys are the legend. <laughs> no. 2027. I'm, I'm learning a lot from you guys. So appreciate you, 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 man. You appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Um, I want to I wanna go into just the Gators. Uh, we just had the founder on. Yeah. And he just... I, I, that's the first time I met him. And, like, I didn't understand how many great players came from this program. Facto. I want to talk about, you know, why why did you choose to, you know, coach with the Gators? So, for me, I loved basketball in high school, right? So, I played basketball. I was a good player. So I played with Michael Nuga. Okay. I played with Michael Nuga. He was, he was playing. He played pro. Yeah. He went to UNLV, you know? Right. But after I was, I, I was done, my problem is I went to a school in Oshawa, and we like to party a lot. <laughs> so my, my fifth year, I was partying a lot. Right. And and I went, I had a couple of Jukos for me. Right. And I, I went to Centennial Charles, and I made it. And I came back. I, was, I told him, I was like, honestly, I don't want to play. I, I like playing runs. Right. Like you guys see my TikTok. I like oh, playing pickup. You go. <laughs> but like the coaching aspect, like right. the working hard, this and that. Because for me, I wanted to play basketball for the NBA. Fact so though. once I realized, yeah, I wasn't going to make it, <laughs> you just I was like, yo. It's NBA or nothing. NBA or nothing. Fact really, though. NBA or nothing. Fact though. Fact so though. for me, honestly, I was like, trans, like, why don't you just try coaching? Right. So my first year, I went, and I just watched him for a whole year. I was like, I don't want to jump in the fire. Let me just watch. Just watch. I stole everything he did. <laughs> I want to admit it to him. I stole everything he did. <laughs> right. So I scouted that he was coaching grade four. I found all the top grade threes because yeah. we're playing up. Right. I lived in Durham. <laughs> and then, yeah, I just trained them all with my business partner, Tyler Walker. Right. And then we just did it. We're ranked number one, and we didn't lose the whole year. Fact. Wow. So, yeah. you've, been, so you've, been, you've been ranking, you've been developing talent, top talent, for a while, since grade three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I got to give you your flowers now because we have our battles. And... I don't know what's in the water in Durham, but all these kids that he coaches, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, this is grade 6 going to grade 7. 5'8", 5'9", 5'10", 6". been like ten, that for a while, man. Six. <laughs> what is in the Durham water? And they could hoop. Yeah. He probably has, I like to say 1A, 1B when it comes to the rankings, but he has the top 20, 30 hooper. I forgot his last name. I, I call him Z. It's okay. I can't is, pronounce the last name, too. And I'm African, so. <laughs> he is a problem. And now he's got a jumper. It's scary. It's scary. Wow. You know what I mean? But let's talk about real quick. You mentioned from ball to coaching. Now you're a content creator. Coach slash content creator. How's that going for you? Because your views are going up. Followers are, 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 are increasing. What's Honestly, the deal? Like when I started doing the rankings, 
I wanted to do it earlier. Right. When I was young. But I was like, Yo, I don't want everybody to hate me. That was my thing. Because I just started. I was like, everybody's going to hate me. You know, but I always knew all the kids. Right. I was like, everybody's going to hate me. But then as I grew older, I'm like, they already hate me now. Me as well, you know? <laughs> so I just started doing it. I just yeah. started doing it. And then I got more hate. And then I went to the U.S. And I was like, let me just ask everybody to pronounce Canadian cities. Yo, y'all taking I, those skits. It is hilarious. <laughs> I, and I asked all the Americans to do it. And I didn't realize that I actually don't know nothing about Canada. <laughs> and then it hit, the video hit 1.2 million. And I'm like, damn. And endorsements, uh, people are hitting me up. And I'm right. like, yo, this is legit. This is actually a real thing. Right. So I'm like, all right, let me just start doing this for fun. Right. And then people, I'm honestly just being myself. People are like, why are you so extra around? So I'm like, yo, that's actually me. I'm showing everybody me. So Coach Chris... This, the like content creator, right? It's just me being myself, right? Right, right. right. People That's are like, the best oh, way. Why are you posting yourself getting crossed? I actually find it funny. That's me, <laughs> you know. I'm like, yo, I got crossed, he got me today, <laughs> but I'm gonna get you tomorrow, you know. I, you I know always what? watch the clips when you're always you're always playing, like, you'll, you'll play a parent, like, the parent's mad because his son don't get no playing time. I'm gonna bust his ass, <laughs> <laughs> yo. I'm yo, dying, <laughs> but it, it looks like. You're not even doing this shit for the money, fam. It's like you actually like doing this. Fam. I actually you, like doing you it. Can, you can feel the love. You can feel the authenticity of your videos. Because when you, when, you, when you hit me with a, <laughs> I'm playing against my ex-girl's dad. You know what I mean? Like, scenarios that <laughs> guys really go through. And he's busting their ass one-on-one. -on -one, and he's bringing it back to the game of basketball life. Right, right. So, yo, flowers. But let's talk about the rankings one more time, fam. Okay, yo. When you drop the rankings, I, I like the way you you watch all the talent. You're talking about from 20, what is it, 2026, all the way up to 2030? Yeah, uh, no, 2024, all the way to 2030, yeah. Right? And you do your research, you're actually watching the talent. That's a lot of work. What, what ha how are your DMs when you don't put somebody that's, that's good because there's a lot of good players. I can only talk from the 2030 side. There's a lot of good players you're missing, but you did expand it from at one point it was 10. Now you're at 25. You know what I mean? So, but that just shows us 2030 is going to be scary. The thing about my rankings, I tell everybody, I could be 100% wrong. Right. And I tell everybody right now, your rankings doesn't matter. It's just my opinion. Right. My rank, I could rank, right. I could, there's kids out there that I haven't ranked that are going to be really good in high school. And this is for all the kids. My rankings doesn't matter. Just use this motivation to get better. Yep. And if you're yeah, not on the right. ranking, just get better. I'm not the NBA scout. I'm not the, I don't determine if you're going to the draft. It's right. honestly just my opinion. Right. And I'm glad I'm here so I can tell everybody. <laughs> it's my opinion. So you, when you know people what the get craziest mad thing with rankings? Sorry to cut you off. The craziest thing I've ever seen with rankings was Tracy McGrady. Right. He wasn't ranked at all. Ooh. He went into ABCD camp, and that's how he became the number one player in the country. So he was unranked. Yeah, that's right. Crazy. Unranked. They got him in ABCD camp. Right. He killed everybody. He was number one player in the country. So, like he said, rankings mean nothing. But go ahead, go ahead. It means nothing. So everybody getting mad at me. You're young. Oh, they're too young. This and that. Yo, I believe in competition. That's how I am. I believe in competition. You're yes. first or last. You got to teach your kid to get better. That's it. It's a, it's a, it's a truth. If your kid doesn't step up to the light, hey. Get better. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. Simple exactly. as that. Simple as that. That's it. Kobe exactly. Bryant said he used to look at the list right. and go at everybody as a kill list. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes that happens with us when we'll post a player on our story or whatever. We'll highlight a player and we'll say, yo, he's nice. People will DM upset about it, whatever. Right. It is what it is, it man. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. But like you saw the game uh, yesterday. Right. Paul and Kamani going at each other. That's the number one player and the number two player. Right. After the game, Kamani scored 35. He said, who's Paul? You know, Paul, after the game, said, watch. They're going to play each other in the final. Right. But that's basketball, though. And uh, they, but you see them dab each other yeah, after the love. game. Take it personal when you see those rankings. But when you see each other on the court, yeah. take it personal. Take it personal when you get on the court. That's yes. it. So, yo, 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 let's, let's stick to the Jaden Fitz Classic, the 45th annual Jaden Fitz Classic. We're live on location. What games? What matchups are you 
that you've seen that you were like, yo, I'm looking forward to this championship round come Sunday. What has your experience been so far here at the Jane Fitch Classic? I want to see BOA can win. For the young ones, I want to see BOA can win. Okay. I haven't seen him win in a while, so I got to see if he can win. That's for the young ones. Okay. Right. For the older ones, I want to see Kamani and Paul again. I want to see that matchup. Will Paul step up and overdo it? Overdo it or will Kamani crumble? What are, what are your thoughts on, on, the, on, on the beef right now? Arizona Unity versus Canada Elite. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of back and forth. It's it's a business. That's all I could say. It's a business. Right. <laughs> Some, if you see the best player, take as a compliment. Somebody wants to take him. Yeah. You better hope they're loyal. If they're not loyal. Hey. Yeah. At the end of the day, you want the kids to do well. Yeah. Right. At the We're end all of the day. doing this for the kids to go far. That's it. Message. Let's not forget that. Yo, it's all about that child getting a scholarship. You know it doesn't mean? matter who did it, who not. You That's know, how I look kid, at it. Yeah, the kid could go with that person and come to you and be like, I want you to be my agent. I want you to, you never yeah. know. Right. Yeah. Don't right. burn bridges. That's all. Never you know. that. Keep those relationships. Continue to drop those gems, Coach Chris. Relationships. Build them as much as you can, man. Don't burn bridges. Exactly. But yo, that's it, man. Yo, we got the legendary, the legend in the making, Coach Chris. Yes, sir. Durham's. Yo, he let me know that, yo, they got, they got some grit in Durham. Like I said, the Hoopers, I'm always going to say this before it ends, the Hoopers in Durham are the new West Coast. Oh, shit. We're the ah. toughest one now. Durham oh, Hoopers ah. are the toughest one. Oh, shit. Ah. Oh, shit. Wow. So let all the Yates kids know. Wow. Durham, this is a shout out to Yates. Wow. The Durham kids are tougher. Wow. Wow. Okay. And that well, I got love for the Yates kids, though. It's all it's love. You know what I mean? It's all love. I love this guy to death. But you don't know. I'm taking that to heart. We're back in the lab tomorrow. You know what I mean? But, yo. Shout out Coach Chris. Yes, sir. Now that 45th annual Jada Fitch Classic, man, where hip hop meets hoops. Oh, hold up. 50 years of hip hop. Hip hop turned 50. Oh, my hip hop, really? Yeah. My question to you is, what hip hop artist introduced you to the, to the love, your love for hip hop? 50 Cent. Ah, oh, let's 50 cent. go. What song was it? Many Man. Yup. It's a classic. 50 Cent right away. It's a classic. I went to the UK for him. That's a classic. Yeah, I went to his concert. That's a classic. Come on, that's man. That's when you said that you were going. I was already signed. Appreciate you, man. We got another. Cent. That's why we connect so well, man. We listen to G Unit, man. 50 Cent all day. All day. Live from the 45th annual JD Fitch Classic. Oh, right, by the man. way, uh, shout out Chippy. Shout this out Chippy. This tournament Chip was actually well organized. Wow. Well organized. Here's shout, out Chippy. Shout, shout out Chippy. Shout out Chippy. Shout out Chippy. Great Good tournament. job, boy. And we out, man. Welcome to Hip Hop Who's Podcast. We are live on location at the Jane and Finch Classic. This is your boy Iggy, man. And I'm your co-host, Chris Blackwood. What up, what up, what up, what up? Let's go. Listen, oh. man, we got our boy Elvis Dennis from TPG in the building. Legendary. Appreciate you. Love, 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 fellas. Win this is, is a long time wins. coming, man, because we haven't done anything since COVID. That's right. Yeah, man. yeah. So we're talking about, like, Two, two, three years. years. Yeah. You haven't minute. done anything. So you definitely got to come down and sit on the couch with us. Oh, most sure. definitely. But most definitely. He got his squad with him. And I, I want to ask about, you know, the, the winning. How, how you just keep winning? Like, every time we go in a group chat, I just see your, your picture everywhere. Like, you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're like this, taking that picture. Like, <laughs> Right. Yeah, it's, it's like, I, I, I heard they were gonna build a statue. This winning, this winning pattern that you got going on, man. You winning everything, man. Yeah. How no do doubt. you get? How do you get your troops prepared, man? Honestly, bro, it just comes down to staying in the lab. You know what I'm saying? And then just not being complacent and not being satisfied, right? Because every great team has suffered some great defeats, right? right and right, we've right. definitely, like I said, we at TPG, we've definitely been through that. Right, so it's a reminding them of that feeling that you know the saying where you 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 hate losing more than you like winning. That's where we're at with it. You know what I'm saying? Right, we hate right, losing right. more than we like winning, and by doing that, that's where the wins come from, man. But it's just a dedication to the grind and just believing in each and every piece that's on the team, right. and just knowing every day it might be the next man's turn. Right? That's where we're at with it. So, in regards to your winning pattern, there has to be a formula. You know what I mean? That you have, that you instilled into the mindset of your of your of your young king. Yeah. You wanna you wanna touch on just, yo, how do you, that winning pattern is real. 
how do you how do you get to that? Yeah, so I had a coach, a female coach named Miss Harper. Yeah. And uh, real talk, she was like, "Look, you can take whatever shot you want, as long as you're the best defender on the floor." Right. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, right. as you guys, as former players. We like to score. Like, Love nobody it. can tell me otherwise. Nope. Everybody likes to score, you know, especially when you're coming up in youth basketball. Like, parents aren't celebrating the guy that got 20 rebounds. It's sad. <laughs> no, real talk. Nah. It's sad, but it's a scoring thing. So, as a result, I preach defense first. And I tell all my guys, like, yo, the more stops we get, the more scoring opportunities we get, the more of us get to eat, the more of us get to where we're trying to get to. You know what I'm saying? So, Makes that's sense. really the formula. It's preaching defense first, and it's everybody. Everybody eats. Everybody can eat. So how do you deal? How do you deal with the parent that doesn't understand that it's de defense wins game? They want to see their child score. Yeah. And when that opportunity that opportunity doesn't come every game, and that parent comes to you now on some, da -da 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 -da. my son's not touching the ball enough. Yeah. What's your problem? Blase, blase. How do you handle that? Yeah, I mean, we're in the era of technology, right? So there's a lot of games being streamed online. As you guys know, I have a son on the team, so I use him as a great example, right? Sometimes if we're playing a 32-minute game, he might be out there 22, 23 minutes, but he finished the game with five shots. You're not out there forcing shots. You're just playing basketball the right way, you know what I'm saying? So when a parent comes to me and is like, you know, blah, 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 my kid's not touching the ball, all right, jump on YouTube, Watch the MPH finals or whatever. You'll see he's not the only one not touching the ball because it's about it's about mismatches. Uh, you know Jordan Fisher. Shout out Jordan Fisher. Shout out Jordan Fisher. You know what I'm saying top Earth. five player in the country in North Big America. Time. Big so time. it's like majority of the time he gonna have a mismatch. So for yes. me we gonna play through him. Every and time. then you know like I said if he's having an off game or if there's a different mismatch at worst we go through him. So we just try to get the parents to understand that this is a team sport. This is not golf. This is not tennis. It's a exactly. team sport. You know what I'm saying. I, I always ask him, like coaching your son, has it has it ever gotten awkward at the dinner table after games? With my older son more <laughs> so than my younger son. My older son more so than my younger son. Um, it gets hella awkward. It gets hella awkward. Because yo, I'm I'm a purist, right. right? And I'm super, super critical and honest. Not just with my own kids, but any kid that comes into the fold. Because yeah, yeah. it's like, yo, if we have that conversation of where you're trying to get to, and obviously everyone's like D1. The pros. Okay, well, I've been around guys. I've coached a dozen guys who have been there, so I know what that looks and feels like. Right. So I can't come to the game and lie to you about how you played as a small guard. Like we were considered small guards. Right. So our, the way we play the game is going to be different than the way you play the game. You know what I'm saying? And sure. parents don't understand that. Right. But I didn't get into this for the parents. I got into this for the kids. Absolutely. Right? So for me, I put the kids' best interests at heart. Yeah. And I tell them all the time, I might be the only honest person they meet because I don't need nothing from them. <laughs> That's just real. Right? But yeah, it gets awkward at the table. More so with my older son than the younger one. Yeah. Uh, he's more of a knucklehead. Right. But, uh, but he's been playing some great ball. And all those hard lessons at the table are now starting to pay off. Right? So I'm right. happy about that. Bottom line, I, I, rate I, that. I want to talk about TPG versus Yates to happen yesterday. Let's talk about it. Okay, yeah. So first of all, I, a lot of people don't know what TPG stands for. Some people think it's like Toronto something, whatever. <laughs> TPG stands for the Performance Group performance Basketball group. Association. The performance Group Basketball. And the key in that is performance. Yes. Right. So a lot of times people think you know you're playing rep, you pay a fee, you get to play. No. It is about performance. Uh, can, you, can you say that again, Coach? It, Just because you pay your fee to be on the team don't mean you're going to get equal playing time. That's we right. don't do that over here, man. It's the performance group. You have you to perform. perform. 1,000%. You guys are players, so I know at some point in time, a coach either sat you or whatever, and it's like, yo, coach, why not? Yo, you're not performing at the level that you need to to be in between them lines. Plain and simple. And as we talk about the Yace game, that was a hell of a game. Hell of a game. Um, you know, that Yace is a grade seven select boys. A grade seven right? select Versus team. a grade eight, you know, most dominant team in Canada. Bottom line. The greatest well, they, show wait, wait, in Ontario. Hold, 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 hold up, hold up. On the grade eight, on that grade eight circuit, TPG, is a one uh, uh, GTA Elite, GTA one United, B, or GTA, GTA United. United, sorry, one B. I've been here. I heard they beat you already. They beat us twice. Right, as they beat you guys fact. twice already. Yep. And I'm hearing the rumblings in the, in the basketball streets. Yeah. That they're they're the, they're the top team. I I say no. 
I say you're 1B. But what do you say about that? Well, I mean, it's open to debate. I can't tell people how to feel, how to think. I'm just more of a facts kind of guy. You know what I'm saying? Winning everything. So it's like, you know, we're 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 a very active team. We start with that. You know what I'm saying? Wherever there's smoke, we're gonna be there. Bottom line. And I mean, you the accolades speak for themselves. You know what I'm saying? So every great team, the 72 and 10 Bulls, they lost 10 games. Right. They're still the greatest team in Bottom history. Line. Uh, so that's how I feel about the greatest show in Ontario, so, which is the TPG. So, so GTA, GTA United, sorry, you guys are the Utah Jazz. Compared to the 72-10 Bulls. Keep working, though. I see. But, I see. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the, the TPG, the performance group, it really comes down to that. Having the guys come in and buy into performance. But it's deeper than that. It's not just performance on the basketball court. Right? It's performance at home, performance at school, performance yeah. in the community. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's exactly. not just about the guys dribbling the ball. Because we know not every kid is going to go D1 or right play pro. But it's funny, when we have our parent annual parent meeting, we say every child in our program is going to go pro. And the parents' face light up, like this is the right spot to be. And then we bust the bubble. Right. We're not talking about sports. Right. We're talking about professionals in life, whether yes, you're sir. a doctor or a lawyer or, or a custodian. Yeah. But you're going to be a professional in this life where you can take care of your family and provide for them in a meaningful right. manner. Uh, so that's what TPG stands for, the performance group. The Yates game was a phenomenal game. Phenomenal game that, that great seven team, like I said, is, is like looking in the mirror of our grade eight. They got guns at every position, yep. right? And, oh. and shout out to Coach McFarland, who does an amazing Coach job. Matt. Not Coach just Matt. with that team, but any team that he Coach, coaches, yep. those teams perform. They perform, right? they perform. Um, so but yeah, at the end of the day, us. We had you. We almost had you. Yeah, almost. But, yeah, I, I should have phrased that. They almost had us. We almost. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? It's grade eights against grade seven, and this grade eight team is top grade eight team in the country. So I'm looking at it like, yo, they see them as some grade sevens. Yeah, you guys are nice. Haha. Play time's over. Let's get this win. Yeah, no, that that was really what it is. You know, in the time I was just reminding the guys that we've been here before. You know what I'm saying? So many times. And, uh, and then just making minor adjustments, right? Yeah. Yes, they were guard heavy, right? And uh, one of the adjustments I made, I had Jordan Fisher and uh, a new on the scene, up and comer, Jacob Walker, two bigs, yeah. right? And we just weren't able to contain the guard. So it's like, this is what I mean about team and sacrifice, yeah. right? Jacob was a phenomenal player, but we had to sit him in favor of a kid who's literally just coming out of house league by the name of Phoenix. Yeah. And we put him on praise, one of the baddest boys on the planet. And, and he was able to contain him. And really, that's where the game flipped. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I love about basketball and team sport and everybody buying in for the common goal, which was the win. Because nobody would have felt good losing in a great seven boys, hey. right? Oh, man. Oh, man. And we, <laughs> we would have talked our shit. We would have talked our shit, real talk. But yeah, shout, out, shout out your squad, though, real you, talk. Man. Love all hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. 50 years, man, of hip-hop. Uh, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. 50 years of hip-hop, uh, we are celebrated. Coach, one of the questions we have circulating in, in the hip-hop hoop world is what hip-hop artist introduced you, made you fall in love with hip-hop? Simple question. Run DMC, tougher than leather cassette tape. Wow. Provided cassette to me for my tape. birthday by my sister Marlene. Shout Loving out Marlene, Denmark. shout out Marlene. Yeah, like, it's been, like, that, that infatuation with hip-hop and hoops, as you guys know, it goes hand in hand. You can't have one without the other, in, in my opinion. That's right. right. So, but yo, I appreciate y'all obviously having me on again. But All before up. I cut, Ig will tell you, man, I'm a huge fan and supporter of hip hop hoops. Thank you. Man. And it's Thank like you. we need to do this more often where we're celebrating each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? And like really building each yes, other's sir. platforms up. Uh, I know. It's a lot of times you got to make it somewhere else before you can make it here. And right. we got to do a better job of changing that narrative, especially right. for the kids right. that we have following us. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, my question, just to build on that, Coach, how can we do that? Because I'm looking at, and we're in the Jane Finch Classic. Yeah. You got six courts bubbling right now. Bubbling. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. What The top programs here, we just finished watching earlier today, Canada Elite 50 New versus... Arizona squad, yeah. which is a bad squad. Both. You know what I mean? They're bad. They're down here right now. They're, they're getting all the attention. Two two players from Canada League playing on that team. You know what I mean? 
two-fold question in regards to loyalty. Parents, if a player leaves as a, as a coach, are you going to be petty? Are you going to watch face? Be like, yo, it's a beef thing. It's on site. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, or yeah. are you going to be like, yo, that's the best opportunity for you. You take it. I, I, I encourage you. I want to see you win. Where you where where you at with that? Yeah, so I can't speak for other coaches and other program directors, but I can speak for me. If a player leaves, I'm assuming that there's a better opportunity for him elsewhere. And on that accord, I got no issues with that player, I got no issues with that parent. Right? Anyone who knows me talks to me, I approach sports and coaching similar to academics, right? We are all parents. So if there's a, a bigger educational opportunity, we're not holding our kids back from that. It, it just seems like in the basketball space right now, you know, guys take things personal. It's like, yo, I put so much time into you, da 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 da. Well, that's why we're coaches. Our duty and our role is to pour into the youth so that they can move on to bigger and better opportunities, Back. right? Well, so I've had top guys leave. We are still good. Me, them, the parents, like, it's just what it is, right? Because I'm here to play a small or a big role, depending on the player, right. you know what I'm saying? So for me, sometimes it's six months, sometimes it's six years, yeah. right? But having been around pros, coach pros, D1 players, I know that I'm not always going to be the guy to get them there. I might be the guy that gets them started. Right. Then I got to lob them to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how it goes. And, you know, I've, I've, I've reached out to program directors to try and do that whole work together thing. And some of them aren't for it. And it's sad because it hurts us as an organization. It hurts us as a country and as a basketball community. We just won the Made Hoops Junior Finale. I had been there the past couple years with my own regular rep team. Whoever shows up the trials, we're taking That's the 12, the and off we go. And we've done well, final four the whole night, but haven't been able to get over the hump. Now, shout out to Kevin Jeffers, you know, Kenyon St. Louis, one of the top guys of that oh, age group, you know what I'm saying? He, he understood the assignment, you know what I'm saying? He bought into what I'm talking about in terms of us building so that we raise the opportunities. And sure enough, we go, we win the main hoops junior finale, and all the that. opportunities start Look coming in. All of our boys are going to benefit from that, you know what I'm right. saying? And Kenny right. plays for GTA United, we brought up earlier, you know what I'm saying? For me, it's just always putting the kids first, man. Always. Message. Stop being petty coaches. We need a little bit more unity in the yeah. six because I think the bigger picture is going to the states, representing, playing on that platform, providing the exposure for our young kings 100. to get scholarships, to be better men, and hopefully be pros. Yeah, Fox. that's the end goal. That's the goal at the end of the day, right? So, yo, that, that, that's it for me, man. This was definitely insightful. Dennis, I've been a huge fan. Taking notes like always. Love always, brother. Yes, you know sir. that. Yes, sir. All love, baby. Hip Hop Yo, hoops. this is Hip Hop Hoops, man. We're Hip Hop Me Too. Jane Finch out. Classic. Let's go. We are back live on location at the Jane and Finch Classic. I am your host, Anthony Igadero. And I'm your co-host, Chris Black. What, what up, what up, what up, what up? Let's go. We got one of the youngest in charge, Afosa, in the building. Appreciate you for stepping down with us. Legendary. Course. Let's go. <laughs> Still dunking on man's in the half court set. Windmilling, three, no, not 360, but more so windmilling and dunking with authority in the half court set. Be aware. Be very afraid. Be very afraid. My fault. Jada Finch Classic. I get a little excited. You've been coming, you've been coming to this tournament for a while now. How has how's your experience has been coming through this tournament over the years? Did you um, say well, this is one of your favorite tournaments throughout the year? I would say so, yeah. I feel like it's definitely a like a tradition. Mm. Um, I feel like I've been playing in the tournament since like maybe grade five. Right? Wow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just how it's developed over the years too. Yeah. Um, it's just definitely good to see, you know, Toronto basketball is getting bigger. And like, yeah, I feel like playing in the Jaden Finch tournament is definitely something I do every year. Right. And I always look forward to, because you know, the environment, like this is the type of basketball I like to play. So right? it's, it's good. Yeah. And, and you definitely brought a lot of attention to the tournament with your team. Badman Elite, with all, I was just telling one of your boys, uh, we had Tristan Beckford on, and I was like, yo, the amount of talent on that team, and then sprinkle you as the stimulus package, you guys had the whole tournament going crazy from Tuesday till now. Every time you guys played, all the girls, all the hoopers, everybody is watching your game. <laughs> so, so how did that come about in regards to how did your team get formed? And who called all the girls? 
So I definitely wouldn't say anyone called any girls. <laughs> I feel like girls come to Jane and Finch regardless. Bottom line. But um, <laughs> it came along because basically we kind of have a group chat. Right. And like the group chat's called Bad Mind. It's like depending on like the time of like the year, like the season. Right. It would be like Bad Mind, like winter, for example. Or, like, okay. Bad Mind Father, Bad Mind Summer. <laughs> okay. You know, okay, like, okay. It's just the name of the group chat. Right. But yeah, and basically like like the the team, like all of us were kind of close. So it's just like we've all been close for a long time. We've all been playing together for a long time. So I just feel like, you know, it was like it was one of those moments where it's like the group chat made it out of the group chat. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. So is this going to be like an every summer type of thing? Badman Elise just going to bless a tournament and just dominate it? I would say so, yeah. We're actually making a, a 2029 team. Oh, shit. So for the younger kids, for yeah. the young ones, eh? Okay, okay. Hopefully you guys can come up with a 2030 team. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, holla at some of our Yates guys and Triple Balance guys. Yeah, I think that's that's definitely the plan. I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Because, like, I guess, I feel like, you know, they, they all see us play on the teams. You know, they know that we've come from Triple Balance or yeah. or one of right. those teams. Right, right. So, I mean, I just feel like they're going to want to play on the team. And it's, and it's good. I also we're building something really small. Right. I wouldn't say it's too serious. Right. I guess it's just for fun, but, like. You know, Yo. you get to play for free. You know, you get to get some runs in. Now, nah, so real it's, talk, it's in our Yay summer camp, um, like my son, Diari, chilled with Tyson, Bryson, all those guys are saying, yo, we're on Badman Elite. I'm like, no, you're not, man. Badman Elite's like a, <laughs> you know, a big man team. <laughs> no, no, they're coming up with a younger team. So it's like, you got the younger kids looking up to you guys, so that's super dope. And you got a leading by example, which yeah. is also super dope. Yes, sir. So continue shining and inspiring these young guys. You know yes, what sir, I mean? yes, sir. Let's talk about the Steph Curry camp. Um, you just came from the Steph Curry camp. There's there's a, a viral clip going around where Steph Curry was talking to you. Let us know what he was talking to you about. Um, I mean, Steph, Steph he's, a, he's a chill guy. You know, he's really goofy. <laughs> but, you know, when it comes to basketball, he's pretty serious. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he always wants to see someone improve. So I feel like, you know, the drill that we were doing that one time, um, you know, you're just supposed to read the defense. And me, I was just kind of going through the motions. Right. And he was just trying to tell me, like, you can't always go through the motions. You have to read the defense. And you have to react, read and react. So he was just telling me, like, I'm very talented, you know. There's so many things I could do. If I'm able to read the defense and read what I'm doing, then, like, it would be hard for it to, like, guard me to right. you know, do anything. Right. So, yeah, that's what he was basically saying in one word. And, yeah, no, he's a really chill guy, though. That was a really good camp that I went to. I'll say right. it's one of the... The better camps, you know, we got a whole bunch of gear, you know, being able to play with the NBA player. Right. Um, you know, everything's more fast paced, more, mm. you know, and like being able to play like that is definitely helping me with the like, conditioning and all these things I have to work on right. already. So, right. Yeah. In regards to the development piece, we know, I always ask, I like to call myself a basketball purist. You know what I mean? Self-proclaimed, self-proclaimed, right? So I always ask my young bulls coming up in regards to strengths and weaknesses. I think we already know what your strengths are. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses as a basketball player? Um, I mean, strengths, I'll say I like playing defense. Definitely. I, feel, I, I feel always like, see you anchoring the defense. Yeah, I feel like when it comes to like on-ball defending, yeah. that's something I do a lot. I would say my off-ball does need work, though. Like, my off-ball defense. I'm playing in, like, the gap and stuff. But yeah. other than that, um, I would say that's for, like, the defensive piece. Right. And after, when it comes to offense, you know, I, I think I'm really good in transition. Pretty good. Um, Being modest. I, yeah, I will say, say I'm pretty good in transition. I feel like, you know, I can always find the open man when I need to. Definitely. Something I'll have to work on is just being more consistent in Ooh. everything I do. So okay. not only, like, you know... Like, you know, when it comes to, like, you know, driving or anything like that, making the right pass, I just have to be more consistent about it. And the it. right reads. Yeah, right? and then even, like, you know, the shooting aspect of it. Right. I feel like there's times where, like, I'm consistent, and then there's times where, you know, I'm not consistent. I'm not making shots. I mean, right. you know? Right. Like, even my shot might be changing a little bit. But I'll say over the, the years, my shots definitely got better. Definitely has. And you're but, still working on it. Yeah, still working on it, so. Did, did you did you still, because I, I never got a chance to meet Steph Curry. But I watch all his workouts, and I steal all his exercises and drills. You got a chance to watch his shooting drills and shooting routines. Is that something you're going to add to your routines while you're working on your shot? 
Um, I mean, if that's something I can definitely, that's something I could definitely show, you know, coaches, whoever I'm working out with, you know, the seven grade drill was really good. It was good to watch. Very impressive. You know, he wasn't really missing anything, Whoa. <laughs> but he didn't, I wouldn't say he gave us any, like, you know, not too much pointers, right? but it was more just like, you know, just keep doing you and like be more consistent and do what you have to do and right. everything okay. will come along. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, yo. Like I said, we got the legendary, legend in the making. Yes, sir. The big dog, Bonman Elite's finest, <laughs> a poster in the building at the Jaden Finch Classic, the 45th annual. Yo, continue shining. I know you got a big fall coming up. Yes, sir. School's about to start. Yo, good luck. Continue to grind. Continue to make posters on everybody. And yo, we're Keep out. Representing Canada, man. Definitely. Thank Let's you. Let's go. We are back live on location at the Jane and Finch Classic. I am your host, Anthony Gadero. And I'm your co-host, Chris Blackwood. What up, what up, what up, what up? Listen, we got Rakeem Green in the building. Legend in the making. Mr. 42 Files Steel. Let's get it. Appreciate you for coming, yeah, stopping thank by. You. Listen, you just played a, a hard game against the Gators. Yeah. How do you rate your performance? My performance, out of 10. I rated like a, a seven or a six point five because I could have I could have done things uh, to help my team more like playing harder defense or like penetrating more and kicking out to my guys. Right. I had a I had a solid game. And yeah, I, I think I could have did better though. Nice, 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 nice. Got you. So that was your second game for the day. Yes. So you got a chance to play against some some old friends. Yeah. Well, obviously your friends, but different team now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We grew up watching Rakeem in the Yates program from grade three yep. all the way up to grade eight. Yep. You know what I mean? So how did it feel playing against some of your old guys, old teammates? You know, you know it, it didn't feel real because I've been with them since young, like grade two, grade three. We've been playing our whole lives, and, and now that I'm on a different team, it just felt different. But I went out there with a mindset to kill. Obviously, we wanted to win the game. We didn't end up winning. But I had a good performance. I also think I could have done better or more defensively, um, getting like more stops and, and taking more charges for my team. Mm -hmm. Get down, you know? All right. How, how are you adjusting to your transition in Arizona? Oh, shoot. <laughs> uh, it, it's, a diff it's different. It's very different. The weather, obviously, the climate I'm in is very different. Um, and also the competition that I'm playing, it's way harder and more physical because there's bigger and, and tougher guys than you, and they don't, they don't play. They don't play over there, man. It's different, but I like it over there. I like it. Nice. Um, you, so so you, you scored 42 in the bio steel game. Would, would you say that was your coming out party to the whole country? Yes. That's when I recognized it. Like, who is this kid? Yeah. Right. Would you say that was? That, right. that was definitely probably the most memorable um, experience in my, in my career. So Obviously, far. so far. Right, yeah. right. Um, I, I definitely got a lot of buzz going around from that game, obviously. And for that game, at first, if you watch the game, like in the first couple of minutes, I was just playing around trying to have fun. And you're, you're straight face, seriously. Uh, yeah, and then <laughs> second half, my, my pops talked to me. Yeah. He's like, Shout out pops, Bro. man. Where's pops at? <laughs> He's over there. Like, he told me. Bro, it's I, he, he said he knows it's an all-star game, but go make a name for yourself. And, and I'm like, yeah, you're right. So I just came out, did what I did, you know? In, in, in regards to your pops, man, yeah. I mean, he's, he's been there from day one. Day one. Mm -hmm. Talk about his impact on you. Like, in regards to starting off slow in a game, I always see you always looking at him. You guys have that, that synergy. It's like a look sometimes. And you know it's go time. And it's go, yeah. Talk about <laughs> talk about that impact pops has on you. Well, since since he, since a young kid, I I was like I was also I was always bigger. So like I would play I would play the five and center, and the transition from grade eight to grade nine was a big transition for me because I grew a little bit. I lost some weight yeah. and I was more skinny, right? Yeah, you were and a chubby it, one back in the day, yeah, man. Real I chubby. Was, I was playing the five. I was setting <laughs> I was setting those screens. So. Yeah. But but what he told me was that in high school, my mentality has to be like, go kill, go like, not really hog the ball, but go get your own, right? right. So 
since since grade eight and that transition to grade nine, I I've, I found that like I I had more of a shot because yeah. I, I was young. I didn't have a shot. I was more big, and I was mostly around the rim. But then I expanded my game. At, um, going to Inspire for grade nine. Yeah. Worked on my shot. Always in the gym in Vaughn Sportsplex. You know, just Shout always out working. Coach Mac, you yep. already know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, that grade nine, I I found I found my touch. I found my rhythm. Grade ten now. That's where I'm at. Yes, sir. So in regards to grade nine, was it grade nine you won the juniors or grade ten? Grade ten. This year this I won. This year you won yeah, the juniors. Junior. Hosting. So being the MVP <laughs> in the OSBA, like. Real talk, like that's the top league. That's big time. That's the top league that's big time. in the six in the country. It's a great game. You know what I mean? You guys played Crown. Mm -hmm. That was a that, that, that game. That was, was my favorite game of the whole season. You know what I mean? Mid range oh. assassin. Mm -hmm. When I talk about homeboys <laughs> pull up game pause, is nuts. Pause, pause, and pause. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the kid can go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that. So run us, run us, run it through, like. Can you bring us back to that game? How, how, just talk about your impact. Honestly, it started, it started in that locker room, bro. We got that big ass speaker, and we yep. was, we was going nuts in the locker room. Shout, shout out, Coach Samuels. <laughs> <laughs> we got that big speaker, turning up to young boy, bro. Yeah, we got yeah. Us, got us in that mood to go kill. We went out there. We started off the game a little slow. Uh, we picked it up, picked it up around the second half. Although I feel like we should have won by more, that game went to overtime. It went to overtime. My teammates, me and my teammates, just making big plays, big plays. You know, that's what got us to that to to that that lead in in the in OT. And in, yeah, that's really it. Nice, nice. nice. So I, I want to talk about your goals, man. You got a promising future. What is what are your goals when it comes to this basketball thing, man? Honestly, my goals are to go pro. Preferably the NBA, but if not, overseas, somewhere overseas. And that's really what I have planned for myself. Just go over to Phoenix, do what I do, get better, develop. Develop. Yep. Get, get in the weight room, get a little yep. get a little muscle on me. And, get, get some of that, and, that mass back. Yeah. You, you had a lot of mass when you was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> the transformation is remarkable to see because he was a chubby kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's really you mentioned young about. boy. 50 years of hip hop. <laughs> this is way older than you right now, obviously. Yeah, but sure. I know you listen to hip hop. Mm -hmm. Our question in the hip hop world right now, the hip hop hoops world, is what artist introduced you to hip hop? There's one artist that you just not fell in love with, but fell in love with, like, yo, every time I listen to this, this is what I listen to when I go kill. What hip hop He's artist? About it. That's a good He's question. Who, who introduced you to hip hop? That's a great question. Hmm, I have to think about that. I'd, I'd say Little Baby. Little Baby. Yeah. Little Baby. Yeah, for me, I just feel like, although he's, sometimes he sounds like he's mumbling, if you, like, really take in what he's saying yeah. or go look up what he's saying, bro, yeah. it's some real it's some real stuff. Real talk? I hear Little Baby on every young boys, every one of these young boys that come out with a mixtape. Yeah. Little, Little Baby's the track. He got the flow. He got the, the the rhythm. He got everything. He got the lyrics. He's. I feel like he's really lyrical. Nah, he he, he, he really it. He yeah. goaded it amongst yeah. the young boys. Facts. For sure. All yo, right, man. Yo, it, man. Okay, man. Keep killing it. Mm -hmm. yes, We're looking sir. forward to see you playing some more in the Jane and Finch Classic. Absolutely. Continue to get better. Continue to listen to pop. Of course. And yo, course. you already and, know, and man. Good luck in Arizona. Good man. luck in Appreciate Arizona. Sure. Real talk. Thank Appreciate thank you, you. you. Rakeem Green, oh, everybody. Let's go, Jane and Finch Classic. You already know where hip hop meets hoops. Let's go. We are back live on location at the 45th annual Jane and Finch Classic. We got a legend himself with us, the Gators founder, Teron Richards. I appreciate you, you know, sitting down with us, man. Appreciate it. This, appreciate is, it. this is big for us. I, I want to ask you first about just your experience playing in the Jane and Finch Classic and how's it going so far? Jane and Finch Classic is always uh, memorable. Chippy does a good job. It's every year you see getting better and better and better and better. We've been a lot, coming a lot, a lot more organized. A lot more organized. Right? A lot more structured. Not, not, not a lot of uh, forfeited games. No, it's really done. I mean, he's it's done a really good up job. Big time. Salute I, to you, Chippy. It, I think yes, what it sir, is, he's salute uh, to Chippy. Yep. So yo, the founder. Yes, sir. Teran Richards, Gators, man. Yep. 
Anytime I come program. to the York region and I'm playing against any team from the York region that has Gators on it, we're talking about Markham. We're talking about Richmond Hill. Richmond Hill. And Durham. And of course Durham. Yes, sir. That's all. <laughs> yes, sir. That's all. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, let's talk about the inception to now. Like, how did this build? How did it build to where it's at today? You know what? Um, I was with another program, started um, Gators um, over in Markham. Um, managed to get a lot of helpful people around us. Ken Sito, Amber, a lot of amazing coaches, Junior Davey, right. Russell Yard, all those guys have really made the program grow. There's a really lot of people who really care and, you know, supportive. Definitely. Right? So, Let's talk about some of the success stories coming out of your program. You got, you got, you got some guys. Yeah, we have. And, and you're so humble about it. <laughs> we don't, we're in a lot of, back. like, I, I've been humble, like, I've been honored to be in a lot of uh, basketball chats, basketball chat groups in WhatsApp. And you hear about the AZ United, you hear about Canada Elite, Yace, TPG, and then you hear about Durham Gators, but you don't say much. You know what you it let, is? You let your success You know, we've, had, uh, we've been around. We had uh, Leonard Miller, Ooh. Emmanuel Miller. Talk to him. Uh, David Walker. Talk to him. Um, wow. AJ wow. Lawson. Wow. Talk to them. Um, who else we got here? Wow. David Walker Miller. We got a few. We got a lot of few guys, you know, <laughs> that's really made our program grow and they were really they did a good job with um with um helping us build. Thank you. I gotta thank you for that. You yes. know what I mean? Because anytime you hear about Durham, you think coming from the city, cakewalk, we're gonna stack right, these right, guys right, up. Right, right. They don't they don't got that girl, they don't got they, they don't got it like that. Bruh. I got humbled. Plenty. Yeah, Chris. Of you, know, time. you know we got a young, a young coach. Yeah, Chris. Shout out, Coach Chris. Coach Chris. We Shout need you on coach the Chris. show. He's, He's definitely he, evolving. I, I like to say, Coach Chris keeps Gators socially relevant. Yes. Because his social, his social platform on He's Instagram. Crazy. He's crazy. It's growing. Yes. And yes. he's showcasing all the young talent you, coming you know out what? of Durham Gators. It, great. great. He's growing. He's maturing. I used to yes. coach him when he was younger. Right started coaching he really likes what he does i really i really appreciate him too right he's really yeah. done a good job good um you know he's, try, he's trying to get better every day too right shout out coach chris we see you, you baby coach chris and coach i want to ask you something like for the young kids out there that want to maybe think about joining a program what what do, what do you look for in kids man that want to join your program you know what? i just i just want kids to work hard if you can work hard and you want to get better we'll try our best to always provide that opportunity one thing i teach my coaches we never promise anything We'll provide you. We'll put you to the place to, to try to get opportunities. You got to do that yourself. We'll, you, right, we'll bring right. you to the river. Yep, we're not, you got to drink. Yep. You got to figure out a way to drink <laughs> yep, that water. Yep, yep. Right? Uh, question. You've been in the game for a minute. How do you deal with parents and their expectations in regards to now that they're getting more social media savvy, they see the mixtapes, they see, they see the end result of a lot of kids' hard work. And they want their kids to get that playing time. How do you keep your parents? Because anytime I see Durham Gator parents or Gator parents in general, they they, they follow suit. You know what they're it pretty, is? They're pretty cordial. Everybody has, you know, you're always going to have that. But it's more trust the process. Trust the process. Believe in what we're doing. And you know what? It's not for everybody. Right? right? It's, we're, always, we're always just going to keep pushing your kids. As for the parents... We have rules in our handbook and guidelines. You're not allowed to talk to parents after the game. You must wait 48 hours. Right. You got to go to the administrator before you speak to the parents, the right. coaches. The coaches, right. So, I mean, you do have parents <laughs> who tend to yeah. go above that. But, you know, that you can you can try your best. Right. But, you know, you're going to have some. Take notes, parents. Follow the rules. Put it in writing. <laughs> Put it in writing. Organization, take notes. I want to talk about the annual tournament that you got. That you said it's been happening for 10 years now? We've run the last one standing tournament for the last 10 years. Every year after the uh, Jane Classic. Finch. Yeah, this year we'll have about, about 110 teams. Wow. 110 teams. 110 teams. And when you first teams. started, how many teams did you start with? We started off with about 20. Wow. And uh, we're, 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 we're doing it here and in Markham at Bill Carruthers. About total about six schools in Markham in about six years. Wow. wow. So it's, uh, it's, wow. Uh, it's a lot of uh, things. And then we have Hoop City starting up in a couple of weeks. So Tell we run Hoop City Basketball League. Right. Looking to get bigger every year. Looking to get better every year. 
started at 40 teams. Now we're at about 100, 100. teams as well there too. Wow. So the, wow. we're doing something right. So the and grind. That's, that you got to give thanks to Jonesy, yes. MA, yeah, I'm Jordan, those guys. Yes, they're, you already they're, know. Yeah, they're part of the Hoop City League, so they're doing a great job too. So Thank you, thank you, thank you. Teran, keep grinding. Yes, sir. Appreciate keep that. leading by example. Appreciate that. Keep providing that pillar because at the end of the day, Durham now has a pillar. Yes, sir. One of the top programs. If I have to go top five, top five programs in the country, Durham Gators is up appreciate there. Appreciate that, sir. We appreciate Great that. Produce. Keep grinding. Thank you, appreciate sir. You, yes, man. Sir. Appreciate that. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. 45th annual Classic. And we out, baby. Jay Fitch Classic. 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 Don't, yep. don't miss. Go. Don't miss our last one standing. Going to be go. nice. Don't miss nice. it next don't week. Five, four, three, two, one. We are back live on location at the Jane and Finch Classic. I am your host, Anthony Igadero. And I'm your co-host, Chris Blackwood. What up, what up, what up, what up? Let's go. This is championship day. We are here with Tristan Beckford. How are you, brother? The young legend. Appreciate you Legend in the making. By. Let's go. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. We'll, we'll, we'll just talk about the Jane and Finch Classic. How is, how's your experience been so far playing in the tournament? Play with Canada Elite, right? Uh, no, Badman Ali. Which one? Badman Ali. Badman Ali. Oh, Badman Ali. Yeah. Oh. Yo, how did that, how did Badman Ali get formed? Who came up with the name? Who came up with the team? Because it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of high-end elite hoopers yeah. all playing together. You know what I'm saying? How did that come about? So, basically, uh, there's a group chat on Snapchat, right? Yeah. And we just, like, I guess Tristan... Tristan Darko is the mastermind behind shout all out, this. Shout out Tristan Darko. Shout out to Tristan Darko, <laughs> man. And uh, yeah, he just put um, a few guys in the group chat, you know, that we're close with, friends. Yeah. And um, you know how YouTubers are doing like their own little teams and things? Right, 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 right. We decided like, you know, why don't we make our own team? You know, we have the talent, we have everything. Right. We have the pieces. So, you know, for just for fun, you know, we decided to make one. Well, yo, I mean, the buzz before the tournament even started, everybody was just talking about Cause I'm around a lot of the young people, and they're like, yo, Badman Elite, yo, Badman Elite. And they're just dropping names after names. And then the stimulus, pack the stimulus package was a FOSA. And they were like, all that and a FOSA? Yo. And then seeing them dominate throughout the tournament, you know what I mean? It kind of fell short in the final. You want to you wanna talk about that real quick, what happened? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Easy, uh, easy Unity. They're a great team, you know? They've been playing together for a long time. Yeah. You know, they're all close and everything. But yeah, I feel like I feel like there's stuff in the game that we could have done to win, you know? Right. But we just fell short. Well, well yo, till next time. Till next time, exactly. I mean, I think regardless in regards to buzz, social media presence, Badman Elite took the cake. You know what I mean? That's the first time I ever heard of that. Badman Elite. Oh man, it's been ringing bells from Tuesday. I thought I thought that was made up when I seen it. I thought it was like a no, skull. No, 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 no. It's like a mistake. No. Nah, they, they, they coming for real. So, in regards to what's popping coming up next school year, where you at? What rep program you with? What's some next moves? Uh, I'm going to be staying at Holden Nalea. Hey. Yeah. And uh, for rep, for AU, I'm going to be playing what you play. You play Canada. You're playing, what you're playing what you play? Yeah, you play Canada. There you you're go. Hoda this fall? Hoda this fall. What, what year are you, are you going into? Uh, I'm going into grade 12, so my senior year. Nice, nice, nice. Question is, are you ready? Of course. You know, I got that dog mentality, so yeah. I'm always ready. So if, if me being a basketball purist, I like to call myself a basketball purist, what would you say your strength is or your strengths are, and what are your weaknesses that you need to improve on? Uh, so I think my strengths are probably uh, getting to the rim, finishing, Rebounding for sure. Oh, for most definitely. Defense. Um, I bring, I like to bring that intensity. Very tenacious. Not. Yeah, you bring that intensity you know, for I sure. I try to get my team started on defense. You know, because that's yep. where it starts. Yep. Uh, stuff I could work on probably my ball handling and uh, getting my shot. You know, more consistent. Right. And you're working on it daily. Yeah, of course. So good job, good job. Fifty years of hip hop, eggs. Yes, fifty years. Hip hop just turned fifty. Um, what was the artist or the song? that made you fall in love with hip-hop? Uh, I don't really have a certain song. I just really like the like the culture, you know? I just always been growing up around that type of music, so, you know, it's just been... You don't, you don't have that one song that you listen to before a game that makes oh. you go out there and want to drop 50? Oh, one song that I listen to before a game is probably... Um, 
Humble by little baby. Little baby. Right. I right. kid you not, man. Little baby, NBA, NBA young, boy, young boy. They got this culture. This, yeah. this, this, this next set of kings coming up. Yeah. Why? Little baby, <laughs> NBA young boy. They running the game. Right? They're running it. They're running it. They're running yeah. it. Sure. Well, yo, Tristan, keep working. We seeing you. You know what I mean? Keep putting in that work. We're watching. That's gonna sign. We're signing out. We're at the 45th annual Jada Fitch Classic. Let's go. We got the young legend, the young legend Tristan Beckford in the building, blessing us with his presence. Yo, good luck in the fall. We'll be watching. Thank you. And we Tristan out. Tristan Beckford, y'all. We out. Let's go.